Let's jump into combat corner real quick. I'm gonna do it as fast as I can because I I said some stuff last I week think, that pissed a lot of people on, me, off in the UFC in world. On this. The Dana you know, White, I'm not the Dana heavy into it, but I did watch a little bit. Okay, but I think they missed what you were saying completely. I think Rudy mm-hmm. said the promotion exactly. of it, right? Completely wasn't as good as it should have been. Mm-hmm. Like That's exactly what I said. And you said a couple mm-hmm. of the fighters didn't have, you know, uh, the situation they were going through. It just didn't seem like that's, you know, they should never got the shot they got or it shouldn't have even been a, a fight at that point. But I think that what saved them was, you know, we had the Max Holloway situation and it was, was it Pereira? Was it somebody else? Yeah. So Alex Pereira, I think the, those the, the two situations, they like, was a dud. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, that fight was a dud. Exactly. Yeah. It was what I expected. So, a wipeout. Uh, the, what what I was saying, and, and 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 you know, people can. This is where people call me a casual and crap like that. I've been watching MMA for since 1993, since I was in high school. I was watching MMA. I watched the first UFC on pay per view for like thirty dollars at my house. So I watched it when they were people in four hundred pounds fighting a guy who's one hundred and fifty pounds. Like I've watched it forever. So and I've trained in in, in jujitsu. So. Uh, you can miss me with the crap about being casual. It wasn't about the fights. The fights specifically, I think a lot of the fights had no meaning. That's what I'm talking about. If I'm putting together the best card that I can put together, I'm putting together the best card I can put together that provides the most meaningful fights for the opportunity to win cha- to get to fight cha- for championships. Obviously, you cannot mm-hmm. put mm-hmm. every title on the line. It's impossible. But we, but what the UFC did in this one is they created the, they, they, they had a, right the BMF said, thing, which I think is the corniest what? crap on it. I, I still said, think it's what? corny. I had, it's corny. Cause I, cause the baddest motherfucker. Yeah, like really it's, fast, you know, mm-hmm. deep flannery. Yeah. Yeah. From, from my it, 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 it's cute. And, and even even MMA fans and UFC fans, it's like they forgot why this was even created. It was created for Jorge Masvidal versus Nick, Nate Diaz to fight at Madison Square Garden. Why to sell the card? Because the card itself had no championship fight. So they created this fake belt. You could have still had these two guys fight five rounds in the main event, and it will have sold just the same. Two names. They're two but good names. UFC fans primarily are f- – they're two names. They're huge names. But the UFC fans are mesmerized and brainwashed by titles, which is why they'll have they'll, – they'll all of a sudden have an interim title – even though there's a champion who just has an injury for a few months and they'll create an interim champ interim title fight like they did with John Jones and created that one they did last year cuz Jones got hurt or whatever and like like you create these belts and then they well that makes the car better no it doesn't mm-hmm. it's a fake belt it ain't the real belt <laughs> and the BMF isn't a real belt at all so so what you're sitting here telling me is that you create that fight. I look. I love the Max Holloway Justin Gaethje fight for what it was. It was gonna be a fun fight. Now that I think it would parlay into a title shot for Max against Ilya Taporia. No, because I thought he was gonna lose. That's the main reason. But secondly, it, it because I think Volkanovski should still get a rematch against Ilya Taporia because he's was the five time defending featherweight champion. And and typically when you defend for that long, you get a rematch. Now, I'm not saying that I like that idea, like that situation. I don't like it. I think guys should have to earn their way back regardless. But historically, the UFC gives guys immediate rematches when they have three, four, five title defenses. That's not going to happen now because it seems like Max is going to get that title shot. And he looked absolutely fantastic. But the point of what I was saying was, one, the main event wasn't set until two months ago. If you look at other major cards, go look at UFC 100. UFC 100 drew 1.6 million pay-per-view buys. This UFC 300 barely broke a million. UFC 100 was 15 years ago when UFC was not so acknowledged mainstream. It wasn't on ESPN. So it was a completely different demographic, and yet it drew 60% more in pay-per-view. Yes, were the ticket sales higher? Sure, because inflation makes ticket sales be, tickets be sold for more money now. That is what it is. But don't sit here and try to... don't. Don't feed me a hamburger and call it filet mignon. I'm not dumb. And I think UFC fans should actually start using their brains and not just their emotions of saying, oh, there's 12 former or current champions. Who gives a shit? 
The opening fight was Cody Garbrandt and Devison Figueredo. Cody Garbrandt has not been the champion in eight and a half years. Who gives a shit? He was three and five in his last eight fights. He's now three and six. He got his ass kicked. They threw Jim Miller on this card. Jim Miller got the shit kicked out of him by Bobby Green. A much faster fighter against a slower, older fighter. They only put Jim Miller on there because he fought in 100 and he fought in 200 and he said he wanted to fight in 300. They did him a solid. But he got the shit kicked out of him. That wasn't an, that wasn't an exciting fight. It was a one-sided ass kicking. Then they put on, on Jessica Andrade for Mar, Mar, Marina Rodriguez. It was a wipeout. Yeah, they made it a split decision. Andrade clearly won that fight. It wasn't a competitive fight. Jalen Turner Moicano, Rodano Mo, mm -hmm. Moicano. That's a decent fight. That's not setting up a title shot for anybody. That's not even getting somebody close. Turner drops Moicano in round one with like 17 seconds to go in the round and walks away. He thinks the fight's being stopped because he dropped him. Moicano gets up and then beats his ass in the second round. That was a decent fight. But is it a meaningful fight to the UFC, the landscape of the lightweight division? No. Then they go to D Sadiq Youssef and Diego Lopez. That fight shouldn't even be on this card. It shouldn't even be on this card. It's a fight night card fight. It's a freaking other UFC. This is not a UFC 300 level fight. Lopez starches Youssef in a minute and a half. That's not a competitive fight. When I look at fights, a great card, one has meaning to every fight. Does that one have meaning? Sure, to those guys, to the landscape of titles. No, it does not. Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison. That was one that I really was surprised about. I was wondering what Kayla Harrison would look like with the weight cut. Not she made the weight long. cut. She looked like she was going to die. But she, she's 42. So you brought in Harrison to fight Holm because you presumed she was going to win. But Holm was the same person that got rid of Ronda Rousey and overcame those judo tosses. What they want, what we all ignore, including myself, was that Kayla Harrison is way bigger and stronger than Ronda Rousey. She couldn't stop the judo toss. But what the fuck was Holly Holm thinking, acting like she was going to grapple with, with Kayla Harrison? She's a boxer. She should have been fighting at distance. She literally grappled with her on purpose. Once she did that, the shit was over. It was, an, it was another non-competitive fight. So you have, a, you have a woman here who beat up a 42-year-old. Aljamain Sterling fighting Calvin Cater. Aljo's moving up to, to, to featherweight. He just lost the belt. He's on the prelims, which is insulting in itself, but he's on there because he's boring. He's boring. And you know what he did for 15, 15 minutes, Nick? He hugged him. He literally wrestled for 15 minutes. He barely threw any strikes. Cater, I think, landed five punches in three rounds. And Cater is a guy who, when he fought Max Holloway, they had a slugfest. Holloway beat his ass, but Cater was fighting. Cater couldn't do anything, and Cater hasn't fought before this in two years. It's a wipeout. Now, one of the best fights of the night, which I expected to be, was Yuri Prohachka and Alexander Rakic. Fabulous fight. Rakic came out on fire. He was beating up Yuri's leg with kicks. I mean, unbelievable job, and Yuri is a zombie. He comes forward, 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 and he finishes Rakic in the second round. Until the Gaethje Holloway fight, that was the fight of the night. And realistically, still could have been the fight of the night. Because I thought overall, Max Holloway kicked the shit out of Justin Gaethje. You, calling stuff fights of the night when someone gets their ass completely handed to them is a little hard for me. Because I thought Max Holloway won that fight probably four rounds to one. Maybe it's three to two. But the rounds that he won, he clearly won. They were not close. And the way he, I mean, look. Then you go into the, the main card and you're making people pay to go see Bo Nickel who's got three fights in the UFC fighting Cody Brundage. Like, this is a joke. You can't sit here with a straight face and tell me that fight should be on this card, let alone on the main card, at least. Cholos Oliveira, great fight with Armand Sarukian. It was a wrestling match. Armand Sarukian basically laid on him, and I thought Oliveira won the fight because he had two, submit, two major submission attempts. I thought Sarukian went out late in the round three when he just completely flattened out. And it seems like Oliveira thought the same thing, but he didn't. And he gets the split decision when I thought Oliveira won the fight, but he didn't. Big fucking deal. But it wasn't some overly exciting fight. Then we get into Gaethje Holloway. Gaethje looked like shit. Gaethje looked like he something was wrong. And, and, and Max looked incredible. Yeah. 
I, I give Max, he's a warrior. I give him so much credit. But I knew that fight would be an overall slugfest. But Max really whooped his ass. Like, if you remove the, the last 10-second knockout thing on the last second of the fight, if you remove that, it was a good fight. It was a good fight. Was it the, was it the it greatest just... fight I've ever seen? Fuck no. It was the ending. Because you know what? Max Holloway's that type of guy where he's going to sit here and say, let's go right now. I'm giving you your last shot. You got 10 seconds to knock my ass out. And instead, he knocks Gaethje out. And Max has done that before in fights where he says, let's go. And they just start rock him, sock him, robot. That's all that was. Rock him, sock him, robot. You know? And um, But after that fight, what do you have happen? The energy of the arena goes like this. That should not have been your third fight. It should have been your co-main event, realistically. You put Zhang Wei Li versus Yan Zhanan. I mean, that was a wipeout, too. Wei Li won that. She won the fight in the first round and then the second round, and then she won a decision. Because she choked her out in the end of the first round. The girl was out cold. She literally rolled off of her, and they woke her up. And then the corner says, do you want me to wake her up? What? At first, they thought she would, they were giving her smelling sauce, but apparently if you push the nose up in some direction, it wakes you up. I don't know how. Don't ask me. I have no clue. And then you get the final fight, which is Pereira and, and Hill, and I expected Pereira to knock him out. I said it last week. I said it in all of our videos, and he knocked him out with the first punch he landed. The first punch he landed. The first punch he landed, he clipped him with three knuckles of his hand. It wasn't even clean, and he knocked him. He put him on his ass. After getting a nut shot, says, no, 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 I'm good. Glock. Out, hammer fist, good night. Three minutes in. And you're going to sit here and tell me that this is the greatest fight card ever? It's not. It wasn't put together well. It was put together, like I said, with duct tape. It was because they poorly scheduled earlier, late last year. They didn't have the fights that they wanted. So they put this thing in two months early. When they promoted other title fights, look at what they've done right now. I mean, when they promote other fights with Conor McGregor, they had given four, five, six months notice. They promote the shit out of it in the past. Back when he fought Holt, Jose Aldo, there are tons of fights that have had built-in stories to get almost like wrestling. I don't want to say it's wrestling, but almost in a similar way like, like wrestling, where they built it up, it's pro pro been promoted. The UFC takes its fans for granted now. They expect the fans to watch, and that's the problem. They oversaturate with 52 cards a year. There's cards literally every week, sometimes two in a weekend. Hell, I think there was one year it was three in a weekend they were doing in, in during during um, International Fight Week, which happens in June, July. You've oversaturated the market with fight with fights, and you just expect us to pay for this shit. And yes, for the fucking noobs who don't live, you know, you go ahead and pay for it. You know, I watched it. Absolutely. Of course I watched it. Was the card overall okay? Yeah. Was the promotion of it good? No. Was the pomp and circumstance of it good? No. UFC 200 had a gold ring. They had the regular ass ring for UFC 300. I would have had a platinum ring. I would have had sparkles coming off. I would have, it would have been a, it would have looked like WrestleMania. It would have been promoted like crazy. WWE promotes WrestleMania for, for a year before. Like as soon as the one ends, they're promoting the next one. This wasn't promoted. And they can sit here and say what they want, but the numbers tell you it wasn't promoted. Because if it only does 1 million buys, that's a high number for an, a, a, a good pay-per-view. That's a high number for a good pay-per-view. Is that a high number for the biggest card in history? No, it isn't. Not at all. Canelo, by himself, fighting the door, will sell more pay-per-views. Canelo Alvarez will sell more pay-per-views. Floyd Mayweather sold 4.5 million pay-per-views to fight Manny Pacquiao and Pacquiao was 100 and Floyd was 105. Old. Floyd sold 4.2 million to fight Conor McGregor who couldn't box. And you can't sell a million for the biggest card in the history of your, of your organization according to y'all? I, I don't buy it and, and I'm not sitting here as a person who, I love MMA. I love it. It's my favorite sport. But don't sit here and, and tell me it's fucking raining when you're pissing on me. Don't tell me it's fucking hamburger when it's tell me it's filet mignon when it's hamburger meat. It was a decent card. There were 10 wipeouts. Wipeout fights. 
a good card to me is not just seeing a bunch of knockouts. It's seeing a competitive fight that leads to a knockout, a submission, or a split decision. Unanimous decisions are not good fights. They're convincing victories, more often than not. Sometimes you have bad, sometimes you have bad judging. But if you have a, a unanimous mm -hmm. decision, typically that wasn't a great fight. It was a convincing win for one person. And if people want to say I'm crazy and I'm a noob and I'm casual and all that fucking crap, go ahead, man. You can think what you want. But that card did not live up to the hype at all. At all. And don't tell me that a guy lands one punch and puts the guy out. And the guy is now after the fight complaining, saying he didn't have time to prepare. Jamal Hill, after the fight card, said, I, yeah, I took this on short notice. So did Pereira. They both took it. Pereira said after the fight, Nick, I'm go, I'll go fight in Brazil if you want me to in a month. Let's go. That's a bad motherfucker. I love Alex Pereira. But I knew what he was going to do. And he did it. And if you're surprised... As an, as, a, as an MMA fan, a UFC fan, you ain't paying attention. And I'm the fucking casual? No, that motherfucker, been, you're the that casual. That could have been a Rudy Rant, guys. So. That's it. So. <laughs> it could have been. Oh, but real quick, before we leave Combat Corner, this Saturday, we got uh, uh, Devin Haney against uh, Ryan Garcia. King Ryan versus Devin Haney. I mean, I don't know if King Ryan's That's in it. his right mind because yeah. he's, like, doing lots of weird shit. Um. It's a humongous fight this weekend. Like it's at the proper like weight bounce, for both of these guys. Back and, uh, I'm, come back. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Bounce back from his win, from the exactly. win that he lost. The lot, the win that he was really like lost to Lomachenko. And, and, and right? I thought he lost the fight. People that he's that guy. or You're better than the last hour that, that he went out there and did. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't very impressed with it yet. I wasn't very impressed. Yeah, I thought I he lost in the fight. To I, don't, I, don't, I don't like what's going on with Ryan. Right? It's a little weird. Like, yeah, so I'm not. Yeah, Ryan, maybe that, that was crazy. To help him. <laughs> I, I don't think so, but um, yeah, I'm going with Devin, man. Um, it'll be interesting. Um, if Rudy invites yeah. me over this week because he mm -hmm. didn't invite me last so. week and I wasn't in town, uh, I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll watch. So I'm going. I'm going out to dinner on Saturday. Okay. I will be home probably in time. I'll, I'll be no at home probably. And I, we'll, I think we'll, I'm going we'll, out. We'll catch we'll it one of these weekends. We'll things see. things change. Um, but I will be watching look, it somewhere. Look, even if I'm sitting at, at a dinner table with my phone in sure. my hand like this. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, def definitely. That's I, I'm excited for that fight. I'm less excited than I was a few weeks back mm -hmm. before I saw Ryan Garcia go through his little mental episodes, which makes me wonder how he's been training. I I, I don't know. I think Haney will win right. that fight. We are, um, we are yeah. well, Thank you for watching. Come on now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.